Well, it's a, one thing that's happened is I, I actually thought labour supply would be a rather dead area by now in terms of research. Uh, 30 years ago, we started studying labour supply in some detail. Um, what's been remarkable is how the labour market's changed and labour supply has been an absolutely key part of that. Women have become uh, equal partners, if you want, in the labour market, but of course they still uh, bear much of the uh, strain of looking after children. So the, uh, the study of uh, labour supply by women, especially around fertility and how, how, uh, how women respond to different kinds of incentive, incentives within marriage, within, uh, but also more broadly, tax incentives and that kind of uh, and those kind of things. There's also uh, the way retirement has changed so dramatically too. With women being part of the labour market, we have to think about how couples choose retirement or decide on retirement together. There's now family labour supply to be thought of. At one time, it was really just uh, the kind of main supplier of labour in a family and then a secondary worker. That's really changed quite a bit. So the way we think about uh, labour supply in a family decision-making model has become a very exciting part of labour supply research. So there are many aspects, um, family labour supply, around fertility, uh, around retirement, and then early on in the labour market, just the idea that, um, you know, how do people decide what occupation to choose, and that's related clearly to the incomes they expect, um, their uh, education. Well, ta taxation and labour supply really go hand in hand, or tax design, if you want. And, um, you know, it, I often say that the, you know, the labour supply side of uh, the tax reform debate is really partly what makes uh, economics a miserable science, because um, the way people respond to tax incentives is, uh, has to be taken account when you... Uh, when you look at how to design the tax rate schedule. And for example, we might like to have a highly redistributive tax system, taxes and benefits, but we have to account for the fact that incentives themselves uh, change the way people respond, and that changes the revenue we get. So if we want to figure out how much revenue we get from a particular tax reform and uh, how it changes the labour market, we have to understand uh, labour supply. So the size of what are called labour supply elasticities, how people respond uh, to, uh, to wage and tax effects, becomes a key part of uh, any tax and benefit design. And so that's kept the uh, area of uh, the interaction between labour supply and incentives a key part of really um, public policy research and uh, continues to be very active because uh, the way people respond and the uh, type of taxes we want to raise changes all the time. I think it kind of reflects, it's a, it's a great place, I think. Um, and it reflects, what's happened here reflects um, really a change in economic research. Um, one is research has become much more empirical. Uh, economics, if you go back uh, to the study of economic policy 30 years ago, very little empirical evidence was used. Now it would be very, un very unusual really to um, think about um, policy reform and just the analysis of behaviour without using very large detailed data sets and doing some considerable amount of uh, microeconometric work. What does that mean? Well, it means you uh, need a place that will uh, be able to house that kind of, uh, that, those kind of resources to do that. This kind of work is teamwork. You don't do it individually anymore. Uh, in fact, economics is becoming at least this empirical economics becoming more, even more like a laboratory subject than uh, economics used to be. So you need a place where people can gather together to share resources and to work in teams. And um, it's a very young area too of research, so it needs to be a place where young people find it attractive to, uh, to be and to work uh, together, a stimulating research environment. So if you put together what's happened in 
at least these areas of research, you need um, teamwork, you need uh, large data resources and a good, uh, a good base for that work and a, a place which is stimulating for young people to work with. Uh, that's exactly, I think, what places like ISO and ISA itself is providing and it's in a sense the way uh, forward, I think, for economic research.